Hey team, Ryan here from Voyager. Super excited to be talking with Richard Conway, uh, CEO of Pure SEO. I finally got it out. I've been practicing all morning. Um, <laughs> so Richard, um, really appreciate you having you on board with us today to have a chat about your business and uh, find a little bit more ab about you. Um, so give us your intro. What, what, what do you do at Pure SEO? What is your role and I guess sort of how it become to be? Cool. Um... I'll go back to 2009. Uh, 2009, I came to New Zealand from England, moved with my wife, who's also British. Um, I'd done a lot of work in sort of digital in the UK. Uh, came to New Zealand, I saw there was a couple of agencies doing things in the SEO space that, in my view, were unethical and would get caught by Google. Mm -hmm. And so it gave me the motivation to start my own thing. So in 2009, getting up midday in my dressing gown, thinking, where am I going to get business from with a laptop, uh, a website that looked like a child had built it, built it um and really built the business um from there and um so sort of now we're probably we're just i think we're 96 people across a couple of countries we'd be the largest search engine optimization agency in new zealand by a long way um we target sort of small to medium businesses under the pure seo brand we also have another company called digital popcorn which deals purely with enterprise companies nice nice so growth pretty quick, I guess, to go from 2009 up to 90 plus um, employees and sort of growing. And I, I think you're right. I sort of preface this interview that I'm in digital as well. And in SEO, um, no disrespect, there's always a bit of a dark arts, isn't it? It always changes. Um, what sort of changes have you seen around, I guess, SEO? Is it always moving? Is it always changing for business owners and, and agencies like yourself? I was actually commissioned a couple of years ago by Penguin Random House to write a book about SEO uh, for the Australian New Zealand markets. And it's written in a kind of layman's terms. And I think the thing with SEO is a lot of it is just good marketing. And I, I, I really don't like all the acronyms of smokes and mirrors. Um, and it's changed a lot over the years, but a lot has remained the same. So it's always been have a good quality website that delivers good content that's good for the customer. The reason people come back to Google is because they do a search and they get what they want. And so there are lots of technical things and things change over the years, but the fundamentals are the same. And I've, I've been in this game since 2002. Um, and ultimately, those fundamentals are the same. There's obviously lots of you know, technical stuff that have changed, but a lot of it's down to people trying to game the system that's changed. So people getting caught trying to game the system. And so they're refining the algorithm the whole time. Um, but in essence, it's good marketing. Yeah, interesting. Because it used to be the the halcyon days of where you typed in a few keywords on your website and and and, and away you went. Um, and and I think I, it, it's the same. I'm I'm a Facebook marketer, so that 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 is always moving and and, and shaping as well. So yeah, I, I I agree. I think you know even in the Facebook side of things, there's always marketers are good marketers sometimes, and I guess small businesses and bigger businesses can get tripped up by the the glitz and the glamour. But like you say, it's really about having a good user experience on the website, um, first and foremost, um, so they make it easy to buy from you. And then all those other sort of technical things is where, where you guys come in, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and helping guide people because a lot of business owners, um, they're, they're spending their time doing their business. And, and the sort of stuff you've got to do with SEO, you've got to do it consistently, regularly, and it's not going to give you overnight results. It takes a long time to start having an effect and that's one of the bugbears of the industry. You get these companies that promise you all these things in short time frame. And if they are doing that, they're either taking shortcuts or they're focusing on things that people aren't searching for. Um, if it sounds like spam, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. Too, the old too good to be true mentality, it probably is, exactly. which, is which is interesting. Um, what is the biggest changes that you've seen in SEO? Um, I guess over, it's always changing, but over maybe the last five years, just leading on from what you were explaining about, um, you know, a good website first and foremost, what sort of changes have you seen to the world of SEO and, and, and the, well, significant ones in the last five years? So Google's got a lot more sophisticated and it starts to understand things thematically. And so you don't necessarily have to target the exact keyword for it to be able to understand. Now, the other side is um, there's been a massive per proliferation of content marketers mm -hmm. and it was back in the day you know you put a piece of content up you'd be quite unique in doing so now everyone puts content up and so you've got to be really thoughtful and really targeted around the value proposition of that content 
Um, and then there's also um, the move to mobile, mobile first. Yeah. And, and then there will be the future move to voice. Mm. Um, and who knows about the metaverse? So there's there's constant changes in the way that we interact with um, search engines and Google kind of um, changes based on that. The other big thing um, is that back in the day, Google would always send um, website visitors to um, visitors to websites. Nowadays, it tries to keep people in its own platform a little bit. Mm -hmm. Google Ads has taken bigger space, instant answers, um, Google Maps. And so there's a kind of friction between webmasters and Google, whereas it never used to be like that. Mm. Yeah, totally. And, and you can see it. At, um, I mean, I proxy, I work with sort of other businesses in the SEO realm. So yeah, I sort of agree with what you're saying. With regards to content, if we were to, if we were, if you guys were to, to talk to a business owner, um, just, just in passing or after, uh, with a coffee or whatever, what would be kind of your top tips around creating content? Is, is, is there something that, is there something that you would suggest? Absolutely. So most people, put out content because they think that's what people want to read or want to engage with. But the smart people go back and they do keyword research and they actually under understand what people are searching for. They find the gaps in content on their website. They create a content calendar and they produce that content around the stuff that they don't have on their website is really relevant to their business and their customer and potentially doesn't have um, the biggest level of competition. So that keyword research is critical. Also, the type of content, you know, we've moved on from just having, you know, 400 word blog piece, you know, having a decent length, 2000 words, having video, having dynamic content, having stuff that's really going to give the customer value, how to guides, all these things that if you put yourself in the customer's perspective and they're going to come on and they're going to leave saying, I would have paid for that, mm. then you've done well. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, it's funny as... um. Um, just um, obviously with Voyager creating our own content and then um, I, I own a small digital market agency that, that you know, sort of by proxy helps both each other out and, and it's just something that I get from business owners as well is you know what content do I need to produce and it's just interesting that, that, that it, it's, it's quality and quantity isn't it I mean uh, those are the two biggest things I always used to say to business owners you know watch your FAQs your customers will be telling you what they actually want to hear from your business, um, you know, if it's a, if it's a builder, um, funny enough, we're just building a home in the Marlborough Sounds, and you know, I know nothing about building, um, but you know, d tell us tell us the whole process because it's it's a bit of a mystery to me. So explain in five simple steps how a build comes to be. Um, so it's interesting that you say that. Um, I guess business owners, small business owners in particular, um, have faced some pretty challenging times <laughs> over the last two years. Um, and look, at, you know, I speak to business owners daily and they're still feeling the pinch from it. Um, how did you guys transition um, in your own business? Um, and how did you help, I guess, uh, those clients that you already had sort of wade through this unprecedented event? So it was, a, it was an interesting time. So in, in our Auckland office, we've got about 65 people. Wow. Um, and we moved overnight from being in the office to being at home. Now... Um, we've got all the systems and processes already in place. We've got a CRM. We've got everything's in place. Mm. Um, and so it was it was quite a seamless transition. That being said, in that April, um, we had client after client after client turn around and say, look, we don't know if we're going to be able to uh, pay our staff. You know, they're all in a contracted retainer with us. But I, I run the business in a way that I treat people the way I want to be treated myself. Yeah. And so in essence, we um, we said to customers, look, let's put you on pause. We'll probably carry on doing the work anyway. Mm. Um, but we didn't know what was going to happen. We were four hundred thousand dollars down on that month of April. And I was looking at, you know, was I going to have to make 25 odd redundancies? What, what was I going to do? Mm. And ultimately it came back. And I think a lot of the customers we allowed to pause and, and a lot we let leave. Yeah. Um, I think they respected that. and. And the majority came back, and I think the relationship is stronger as a result of it. Yeah. Uh, that being said, the stress on the staff, the account managers, having client after client after client contact them, say, "Look, we can't afford it. We don't know what's going to happen." Um, and so it was quite 
humbling the way the staff, the team pulled together. And, you know, we were, they were you know, contacting at all hours. I think we all put in so many hours during that time. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I've still got a business. A lot of people don't have businesses. And, you know, it, it was a hard time. Um, yeah. It was unprecedented, wasn't it? At the end of the day, I think, you know, I think you look young enough not to have gone through the influenza pandemic, mate. So I'm just going <laughs> to put that out there. But um, yeah, um, and I found the same as well. And and, and with even with inside Voyager's business was, um, you know, there were people and obviously our business clients who couldn't pay the bill this month or couldn't pay the bill for the next two months. But to be honest, when we look back, those are the clients that are still with us uh, and wanting to buy more products and services and also being, uh, you know, those those referrers that are so vital to, I guess, any small business in New Zealand. It was it was all hands to the pump and you just did, did what you could do. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a crazy old time for sure. Um, did you learn any business lessons through, through COVID yourself? So... I think the um, one thing I'll just sort of go back on to yeah, your last point, and it's probably the main reason I'm here, is because I came home, um, everyone came home, we didn't know it, um, and I, I use Voyager both at home and in the office, and I've got to say, the internet smashed it. It was so good at home, and there were so many meetings I was on where with other people where they're crackling and, mm. and having problems with the internet. Um, and normally to me it's something i don't even think about um and it's never that was the time that i came to value um using you guys um, and why i said i'll you know come and have a chat with you guys because it was it made such a difference you know i could go on calls i could do everything and i had no problems with absolutely anything but the number of people that um you know customers and other business owners that were complaining about the um, internet at home not working, falling out, the video calls not working, and it made such a difference to those early days. Uh, but business lessons learned, you know, when it comes down to it, it's only business. You know, I had my wife, I got my kids. Uh, if it all gone, um, Pete Tong, it's a British expression, all gone I wrong. Pete Tong. Um, <laughs> And uh, we had to close up shop or something. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we've got a house. Mm. Um, you know, it's the first time I ever thought that there could be an end to the business. I mean, we've grown every year since inception. Mm. Um, the way your family responds to that and the way the people around you respond to that can also be pretty humbling. Can do, yeah. It's just that... Um... Everyone was in the same boat, weren't they? Whether they had a business or not, or were employed, um, and 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 every everyone pitched in, and everyone did what they needed to do to get by. And like you say, at the end of the day, you had a house, and you had your family support, and all that stuff. Um, my wife's actually in healthcare, and she, you know, obviously she was on the front line, and it was a bit of it's just an unknown with you know people coming in really, really sick, and and it sort of put into context that you know, <laughs> death, someone's passing away you know of, of, of something fairly serious and you know your business has fallen out of the back end so to speak so yeah definitely a perspective play that's for sure um that, that that's awesome I really appreciate that and uh, all good business lessons um I think anyone in business kind of learned through that period it was really interesting what is the association for you guys with regards to the David Awards obviously we're we're in it together um we, we love supporting small businesses, and I guess even just the chat we've had today, we can both tell we're on the same wavelength. So what's been your association, <clears throat> excuse me, with the David Awards, and where did it all start? Why are you guys involved? And yeah, sort of give us the background on that. Cool. So Pure SEO, as a business, won the David Awards in 2013. Nice. Um, and it was quite a pivotal moment for us. We won the thing. We got front cover of... New Zealand Business Magazine, and I think we were nine or 10 people at the time. Um, and it really had a massive impact on the business, on the people in the business. You know, we all dressed up for a um, photo shoot and it, it just, it was, it was really good. And then a few years later, I, I've kept my eye on it. I noticed it wasn't going ahead anymore. So the, it stopped for a year. And so I contacted the owner and said, look, you know, what, what's going on? And, and ultimately, 
um, it was a time issue. Mm. And so myself, um, a few others uh, donated our time um, and I, I donated some money as well and um, technical capability because I wanted other businesses to be able to access what we had. Mm. Right? And I've, I've suggested a few businesses put themselves forward over the years and the impact it has on them, how they feel about themselves, how they feel about their business. It just it's a game changer for a lot of people. And the people who enter and don't win, they still have to look at their business and they, you know, it's free to enter. It, it doesn't it's, it's a non for profit. It's just there to help small and micro businesses because there's nothing out there. You know, you've got the Westpac Business Awards, you've got uh, the Voyager Awards for media, you've yep. got all these others, but for bigger businesses or for different niches, you know, but New Zealand's built on small and micro businesses. You know, that's where I started as a one man band sitting on the corner of somebody's desk, um, you know, and, and these are the businesses that need the recognition and need the support. And that's what the David awards is all about. Totally. Um, I can't have, couldn't have said it better. Um, yeah, I mean, I think big businesses always survive through these times and they've got the backing, but often the unsung heroes of business are the small businesses that grow people to, to larger companies. I think about um, all those digital marketers that have started off in you know, one to two man bands and have, have moved into roles of a, of a senior role into, into sort of the exec side of things. But yeah, no, we, we're obviously 100% behind it as well. Small business uh, customers for us make up just about 70% of all of our business and they're terribly loyal and um, like we were talking about through the COVID period where everyone needed connectivity and we appreciate what you're saying around having good internet. We <laughs> Obviously working for Voyager Internet, um, we've got a reasonable supply of internet as well and, and it, it just became a lifeline. Um, and yeah, small businesses relied on, on voice and they relied on broadband and they relied on all those 365 products that were out there. So yeah, it was um, a no brainer for us to be part of the David Awards. It's a fantastic. I, 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 obviously, um, this is, we're a, a major sponsor this year and it will be a major sponsor for years to come. It just, it just makes sense to get behind these guys who, ones and twosy bands, who, who really do make the big difference in the company. Um, so quickly wanted to go back to, I guess, um, Pure SEO uh, as a business and um, yeah, how, how, does, how, do we, how does a small business out there or even a larger business that needs to get, get this kind of stuff sorted? Obviously we alluded to um, there's a, a number of things that SEO is and SEO isn't and obviously you guys are across that on a daily basis. How, do, how, do, how does a small or large business get in touch with these guys? What is, what is the best way? Website or what, what's the best way to get it done? Cool. Um, PureSEO.com or Richard at PureSEO.com. But, um, yeah, we can't help the really micro businesses. We're, we're too expensive. And so yep. uh, I wrote, like I said, the book for Penguin Random House. Uh, you can get it out of the library. Um, it really will tell you what's right and wrong in layman's terms so you can do it yourself if that's what, stage you're at in your business uh I, we also teach for unitech for the university of auckland i'm very much about educating and helping smaller businesses on that journey to get the right information like if you're if you're a slightly larger business you know four or five people plus and you have a marketing budget we'd love to help you we'd love to have a chat with you uh, if you don't um look at the book yeah look at the stuff on our website and you know, if you've really got a question you want an answer you can always email me you know, yeah, no, I really, really appreciate that. And um, like I say, as a digital marketer, um, the power of, of, of having someone who knows what they're doing, um, and, and particularly SEO or any any uh, any of the, I guess, the marketing areas is vitally important. And Richard, we yeah, we can't sing your praises enough um, at Pure SEO. You've you've got a great team behind you and a team of experts who know what they're doing. And yeah, we can we can only but vouch for 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 the results that you're getting for the clients as well, especially through this. Still in different time, um, so <laughs> fingers crossed we're kind of um, through what we needed to go through. Um, but no, I really appreciate your time. So that's um, just the website again. It's pureseo.com.